you know, we come and get refreshed, which is wonderful. <laughs> I couldn't make it without getting refreshed. I ended up killing somebody, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when after you get refreshed, when people cut you off and stuff like that, you just laugh. If you're not, if you're not refreshed and you're in the flesh, man, you want to kill somebody. <laughs> you know, so in this, you know, there's an area where we always want to keep a good attitude. <laughs> but you can't keep a good attitude. It's hard to have a good attitude if you're not refreshed. You know? One of the things that the Spirit brought to my attention tonight, he said, do you remember when you were spiritually awakened? See, the, you can be saved and not be spiritually awakened. That, that's the difference between the area of being saved and born again. See, because when you're spiritually awakened, you are born again. You are born of the Spirit. You, you, you see differently, man. You're like a brand new kid. It just sees things differently, bugs look different, everything's different. The world is different. And in that area, that spiritual awakening. Now, I used to hear that when I used to, when I first was trying to get rescued and I was going to 12-step meetings, you know. You know, I think it took a lot more than 12 steps for everybody going to those meetings. <laughs> Anyways. I used to leave that meeting and I'd always hear this voice saying, there's something more for you. And I remember somebody saying the 12th step is a spiritual awakening. Unfortunately, people had these awakenings that were not spiritual. They were demonic. They were, the light bulb went off. And literally, the light bulb went off, you know. And they had an awakening. <laughs> but it was a wrong awakening. See, you can be physically awakened, emotionally awakened. You can be awakened by fear. But there's a spiritual awakening that comes from God Almighty. And when that awakening comes, you never want to lose it. You never want to trade it. You never want to compromise it. You never want to let it go. You want to keep it refreshed and activated all the time. All the time. You know, we desire to have that awakening constantly, you know. So, it, again, it, the spiritual awakening is not an AA or NA. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. That's how it starts. It's with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and his fire. And actually, you know, you're awakened. And you're like, whoa. And then in the book of uh, uh, Joel, it says, and, and after those days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And you'll have dreams and visions. You'll prophesy. You'll speak words that aren't from you. God will take you in multiple places in the spirit. But there's that area that where you and I need to keep that. When we are spiritually awakened, we have to keep that. We have to refresh it. Because awake, it means you're awake, you know. But the enemy likes to come and dull us, compromise us, tries to put us back asleep again. We're seeing a lot of people going back asleep again right now globally. Amen. Would you go to Ephesians chapter 2? Spiritually awakened. You know, when you get pinched because you're falling asleep, that's physically awakened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm. Glory. You know, they, there's a, what the, the, there's a we, we hear the slogan that people are being awakened globally, you know. But they're being awakened to the lies and deceptions because they're being awakened to truth. But this is, 
temporary truth, isn't it? But then there's an eternal truth, which removes you from the things of the temporary into the eternal. And that's where we want to stay awakened all the time. That's why it's important to make what's unseen to become seen to you. Amen? See, tonight we've come together and we've gotten refreshed. I don't know about you, but I sure did. I got revived tonight tremendously. And I needed it, probably because God wanted a, this word to be released. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, let's speak it together. He says, in you he made alive. You know what that made alive means? Is this too loud? I, I need it a little bit lower. I'm trying to speak low. Thank you. To be made alive is to be what? Spiritually awakened. <laughs> Because life is then comes from the other side. It comes from the eternal realm. God is the life giver. So when he says, you were made alive, you were spiritually awakened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of air, the, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind or thoughts, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Man, we needed to be spiritually awakened to come out of God's wrath. Amen? So in this, it's so powerful. And, and he said, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, we didn't even understand his love. We might have been told God loves you. How many times? Jesus loves you. And you want to slap the dude, you know? Oh, shut up. Until you were spiritually awakened. Then it's like, yes, he does love me. <laughs> Verse 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, for by his plan of grace, we've been saved, we've been rescued, and raised us up together and made us. He made us. He positioned us to sit together in heavenly places with him in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by his plan, by the plan of grace, you've been saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. In other words, God made a plan for me and you to escape. That's a gift. Amen? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Made us alive, spiritually awakened by the spirit of the living God. Set us in spiritual position to grow, to learn, to follow, to fight, <laughs> and to die daily. <laughs> so that we may express Christ every day of our life. <laughs> and John chapter 12. So many have fallen asleep or have become dull hearted or even compromised. And again, it's be, what, what this, the season when we're timing that we're in, you know, we're still in the burn. Amen. People are sensing, they feel that burn all over. I'm telling you, I've never seen so many people ill, hurt, damaged, uh, physically, emotionally, mentally. It's incredible. But you know, it bounces off of us. We may be a, a slightly infected, but it still bounces off of us, you know, because we just keep going. Because we've been refreshed, recharged, reconnected. We're like a never ready battery. Playing that, tsh, 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 what's that little monkey or whatever it is? I don't know. What is it? Oh, a bunny. Funny looking bunny. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 12, 23. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. 
But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life, now he explains what he's saying. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Try to explain that to someone that's not born again. If anyone serves me, this is where he says serves me. Let him follow me. See, many try to serve him, but don't follow him. There's a difference. That's where they don't, they're not accounted. Their works are no good because they're not followers. They just serve. And they do it to be self-glorification, self-promoting, or recognized. So he says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him, my father, will honor. My father will what? Honor. To serve is to follow. To follow is to fight. And to fight is to die. Hello. You're fighting to stay dead to yourself. Do you understand that? Every day, the enemy's always tried to reactivate your old man. So, in reality, the divine order is die, fight, follow, and serve. <laughs> it's what? Die, fight, follow, and serve. That is the divine order of God. Die, fight, follow, and serve. Why? Because you have been spiritually awakened. And now you want to maintain that spiritually awakenedness. In Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are a few who find it. So, he's, you know, difficult. It's difficult. There's a fight going on, man. There's a battlefield in your mind and your emotions. There's a battlefield in your body. There's a battlefield in your house. There's a battlefield in your job. There's a battlefield wherever you go. There is a fight. He says here, verse 15, But beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits, for men gather grapes from uh, thorn bushes or figs from thistles. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown in the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you shall know them. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him as a wise man who built his house on the rock, and a rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So he's talking about pure, people that were spiritually awakened and have actually fallen asleep. They did not maintain that spiritual awakened level. They compromised. They began to do works instead of relationship. They began to serve, justifying themselves in their service in their relationship with God. Does everybody understand that? You hear about this and see this all over. All over. See, you know someone not only by their fruits, but by their desires. You'll know them by their desires. If they start boasting about all the things God uses them for, whatever, man, you know what? I don't want to hear that. 
Does everybody understand that? God can use a donkey. Hello? Oh, God used me for this. There's nothing wrong with being used by God. But you better know how to be able to release that so it's not self-promoting. Does everybody understand? We, want, we don't want to self-promote ourselves. And there's times when God says, don't throw your pearls in front of swine. So you must be careful. There's a time and release of everything. Remember, there's the legal time and God's time. There's the legal time and God's time. And this is where many people think that any time is okay. And that's not. Hallelujah. Difficult to live in a world controlled by deception, fear, and lust. After awaken, <laughs> the enemy attempts to distract, discourage, dismantle, disconnect your awakenedness and restore us back to a sleep mode and survival mode. That's his job. That's what he tries to do. Does everybody get that? You know, he tries to also get us back on medication. And, you know, oh, oh, I'm struggling. Maybe I, I can't tell you how many people I've seen that were God was free and bit by bit by bit. And then all of a sudden, they stopped fighting. They started compromising. They allowed the voice of the stranger. They had a spiritual awakening that they got awakened and went, whoa, this is incredible. Whoa, I mean, this is awesome. And then they say, I need more medication. I've seen many people fall into that and go right back into the world. Health, med mental medications, things to that degree, you know. Don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you not to take an aspirin or Advil or something like that. Or if the doctor prescribed, people are on high blood pressure and stuff. But you know what? You can get off of high blood pressure. You can get off of diabetes stuff. You can get off of that and you change your diet. You start feeding your temple good things. And your body will start shifting and turning around. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men and women who will be able to teach others. Now, he's saying commit these to others who, who are faithful. They're the same faith. They're like-minded. Everything we learn, we're to be able to pass on. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier in Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules or divine order. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all these things. Remember that Jesus Christ at the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For which I suffer troubles and evildoer, even to the point of change, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I what? I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, speak it with me. If we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Praise God. Maintaining a divine order of life, avoiding the kingdom, avoiding and cooperating in the kingdom principles and eternal rules of protection so we don't fall back asleep. Does everybody get it? You want to maintain a divine order of life according to the kingdom principles and the eternal rules of protection so we don't fall back asleep. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, 
Be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness or foolish talking or coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous, covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to God. That takes relationship. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. That's why a lot of things are being exposed right now. Because of the prayers are bringing more and more light of God into all areas. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are what? They are evil. We've got to stay awake because the days are evil. You know, you never know when the enemy's going to sideswipe you. 1 Corinthians 15. And verse 33. Do not be what? Don't be what? Don't be what? One more time. Don't be what? Deceived. Evil company corrupts. Wow. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. This I speak to their what? To their shame. Why? Because they refuse to let go. Oh, hallelujah. Evil. Generic. Double-minded. Unstable. So-called Christians will corrupt your awakening status. You must be careful. Amen. You'll know them by their fruit. Philippians 2, verse 12. Let's speak it. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absent. What does it say? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out. It means Work means to fight. Fight. To die, to follow, <laughs> and fight for the truth. Fight for God's presence. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed. Hello. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 13. For it is what? It is what? God who works out, who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain again work out fight out fight to die fight to follow fight for the truth Fight for God's presence. So Romans chapter 1. Those who do not fight become casualties. They're called casualties of war. Spiritual warfare. Verse 8. Romans 1, verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken 
of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. That without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Making requests if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift. So that you may be what? Established. That is that I may be encouraged together with you by mutual faith, both of you and me. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor to the Greeks and the, to barbarians, but to wise and to unwise. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you, who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For, it, for in it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall what? Live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men and women who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because that may be known of God is manifestism, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his divine attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? Excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they fell asleep. Does everybody see that? They lost their spiritual awakeness and changed the glory of God into a corruptible, into a corruptible God, into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the loss of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Again, these are individuals that have fallen asleep. And now they're looking for a fulfillment. It's a false fulfillment. And they'll be led by, away by lies and deceptions and lust. And Jeremiah 17. In verse 5, let's speak it. Thus says the Lord, curses a man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. And shall not see when good comes. He will not be able to see good opportunities from God. But shall inhabit the parched places in a wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. But blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. That's rewarding. Amen. Those that trust in the flesh miss opportunities from God. Those that trust in the Lord and stay awake, they won't miss the opportunities. Hebrews 3, verse 7. You know, think about how glorious, how awesome to be spiritually awakened. I mean, come on, you go out there and you run into a lot of people and say, yeah, I'm spiritual, but you know they're deader than a doornail. I'm so spiritual, you know. <laughs> they say, oh, oh, yeah, my mother's religion and my dad's religion, but I'm spiritual too, you know. No, it's got nothing to do with that. I hear that a lot all the time. When, you, when somebody says, oh, what are, you know, what do you do, whatever, or we, 
we have a ministry and say, oh, I'm spiritual too. Well, yeah, yeah, right. You're connected to the wrong spirits. That's the problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. And again, when, when individuals become sleepy, drowsy, and begin to lose that spiritual awakeness, the enemy steps in right away. And it begins to compromise and promote it and water it. And an individual will begin to drift more and more. One of the things, the first thing you'll find out is fear will begin to be, and anxiousness begins to come. That's when you begin to know, man, I'm falling asleep. I need to awaken. Because, see, we should have caught that before it got near us. Somebody get it. Hallelujah. Verse 7, let's speak it. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion and a day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go asleep. <laughs> they always go what? Astray in their heart. That's sleep. They have not known my ways. So I swear my wrath they shall not enter my what? My rest. Now, there's a difference between God's rest and your rest. <laughs> now, we rest in God. Amen. We trust, rest, and wait. But this is not the area where you're spiritually falling asleep. <laughs> you're still spiritually awakened, but you're in a rest. Amen. You're in that rest where you're just trust. It doesn't matter. You know, you're going to be attacked, but it depends what you do with it. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart from, of unbelief and departed from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ, if we what? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. In other words, if we stay awake to the end. Well, it is said today, if you'll hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. Amen? Praise God. Titus 3, verse 1. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his what? Mercy he saved us through the washing of the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his plan, grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to stay awake <laughs> and maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. So listen, avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is what? Warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Whoa. Hallelujah. Affirm constantly. Go to Jude chapter 1. 14. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand of his saints to execute ju judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them all, of their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which, are, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Nobody escapes. 
These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. They mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, or on the Holy Ghost, in tongues, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And then some have compassion, making a distinction. On others save with what? Fear. Pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever and ever and ever. And I'm going to close at Revelation 22. Again, stirring yourself up, building yourself up, stirring yourself up, praying what? Praying in tongues, reading your word, feeding yourself. Revelation 22. Verse 8. Spiritually awakened. Don't fall asleep. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Now I, John, saw and heard these things, and when I heard and saw, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me these things. Then he said to me, See that you do not do that, for I am your fellow servant of your brethren, the prophets, of those who keep the words of this book, worship God. So even the angel said, man, don't worship me. Does everybody get it? You know how many people are worshiping angels? Many. And then the devil comes as an angel of light. Amen? Verse 10, and he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is what? It's at hand, it's now, it's being released. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs, which means demonized individuals, sorcerers, sexual immorals, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever loves and practices a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things. In the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come, and let him who thirsts come. Whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, this prophecy, God will take away his part from the book of life, from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, Lord Jesus, come. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Amen. Maintain your awakening. You have been spiritually awakened by God Almighty. What an honor and blessing that is. Don't let the enemy put us asleep. Amen. If you see a brother begin to doze off spiritually, awaken him. Help him. Amen. Just tell him, look at man, you're drifting into sleep. Maintain those fruits, maintain in everything we do.
so that we don't get swiped, 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 side swiped by the enemy. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the words tonight be penetrated into every part of our being and bring to remembrance of, through the Holy Spirit. We thank you for putting in this, all of this information into a storage place, Lord, where you can quicken us at any time. Keep us awake. Revive us. Refresh us. And let your word and your voice be the leading voice in our temples in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.